I've been getting a lot of questions lately about whether or not somebody should actually try and make a purchase in this market. There's a lot of people out there saying, hey, if you're trying to buy a home in this market, you're making a grave mistake. And there's other people who are saying, hey, this still might make sense for me based on my own situation. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the pros and the cons to trying to purchase a home right now so that you can make the decision on what to do for your own situation. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about when it comes to this type of scenario is what is the real reason why you're trying to purchase a home or what is the reason why you're trying to uh, you know, end up waiting? There's a lot of positives to trying to buy a home right now and there's also a lot of negatives. So you really kinda of have to ask yourself some of these questions. Number one might be, hey, why am I trying to make this purchase right now? Number two might be, what are the things that I'm going to uh, benefit from and what are the things that are gonna be a drawback to purchasing in this market? You also might have to look at what's going to happen in the next 12 months, right? Because if you don't make that purchase now, you need to look at what potentially could happen in the future and how that will affect you as well. A good scenario with what I'm referring to here is that if you hold off on purchasing a home now, that means you're going to have to do it in the future and who knows where things will be at in the future. You may have to end up renting for a while. You might have to end up staying with family. You might be in a less desirable situation for at least the next year. So you have to kind of weigh that into this overall decision. Now, obviously when it comes to purchasing a home, making that financial commitment is the biggest thing that people are looking for. They're looking at hey, what does the home cost? What are my fees going to be? What is the interest rate? And what am I going to pay on a monthly basis? That is the most important thing for most people. However, you also have to kind of factor in some of these other variables. Some of those other variables that I'm talking about here are the time and effort that you're going to put into this particular situation, right? If you go out there and you just try to buy any home that's on the market right now, you can go ahead and kind of get that over with, if you will, and be able to make a decision very quickly, move into the home and start living the rest of your life. However, if you kind of drag this out, you might be waiting two, three, four, five, six months, maybe even 12 months, this is gonna be a lot of time and effort that you're going to put into this process. So you kinda of have to value how much time and effort do I wanna put into this and what is that time and effort worth on a financial basis, right? If you're spending two or three hours a day thinking about homes, thinking, you know, looking at homes on Zillow, looking at homes in person, whatever it may be, that's taking up a lot of time that you could be spending doing something else, right? Either making money or spending time with family or just enjoying life in general, right? So you kinda of have to look at it that way and I think a lot of people really miss that. Now, some other things before we talk about the pros and cons to purchasing a home right now, I think that you have to ask yourself, hey, what is the reason why I'm not going to purchase a home right now, right? And this could be, hey, is it a lack of education? Maybe you just don't know what steps to take. Is it a lack of being able to uh, afford the place? Maybe it's just that the mortgage payments are too high on this particular property and maybe you need to readjust your price range, right? Or maybe it's just the lack of commitment that you have towards that property. Once you know why you don't wanna make a decision, then you can actually move forward and say, okay, here are the reasons why I don't want to make a decision. How do I work around that? Or how do I come up with some alternatives to be able to, you know, get around those negative issues? So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into some of the pros and cons um, to buying a house right now. Now I'm looking at my computer here in front of me, and I just want to run through some of these pros that we're going to talk about here. We're going to be talking about number one, lower prices. We're going to be talking about negotiating power as a buyer. We're talking about inventory, multiple offers, incentives, and timelines. So let's start with number one here, talking about lower prices. We've already seen prices come down about six to eight percent depending on what area you're looking at and depending on what type of home you're looking at as well. So with prices coming down, you're now going to be able to lock in at a lower price overall. I had to uh, take off the sweatshirt. It was getting pretty hot in here. I was getting heated just talking about this, guys. Okay, so number one, we just talked about lower prices. Number two, uh, negotiating power as a buyer. Right now, even though we've seen prices come down about six to eight percent, we are still seeing buyers have a lot of the leverage when it comes to negotiating offers. The last five offers I've put in, I've negotiated anywhere from five to 10% off of the listing price um, that the sellers are asking for, right? So if a home is listed at a million dollars, we're negotiating anywhere from 50 to $100,000 off of that price. So even though it's listed at 1 million and you think it might sell at that, you actually have a lot of leverage as a buyer. This is the great thing about purchasing in a buyer's market. You also have time on your side when it comes to negotiating these offers, you have time on your side. You can take three, four five days, maybe even two or three weeks to really negotiate one of these offers and come to terms with the seller. This is going to benefit you as 
the buyer because you don't have to make such a rash quick decision to purchase that home at a price that maybe you don't really want to purchase it at. In addition to that, you're also going to be able to set up the timeline to really kind of match what you're looking for, right? Maybe you want a quick close. You want to be able to close in two to three weeks. Well, you do have some leverage to negotiate on that, especially if it's like a new construction home. Maybe the home was just finished. Builders would love to sell you a home and have you close in two weeks rather than the typical four to five weeks that it takes. On the flip side, you could also add on additional time, right? Maybe you have a lease coming up, but it's not going to be ending for maybe two, three, four months down the road. You could negotiate additional time. Additional time. Maybe you're going to say, hey, Mr. Seller, I need 60 days to close on this property. Um, you know, are you going to be able to agree to that? And they may or may, they may not, but you're going to be able to have that flexibility and you hold more of the cards in your hand when it comes to purchasing in this time. Now, the fourth thing on our list for a positive when it comes to this is you're going to have a lot of inventory to choose from. As of right now, there's over 10,000 active listings sitting on the market. If we go back to May, of this year, which would be roughly six months ago, we were sitting at 2,500 listings in the entire MLS system. So the inventory numbers have quadrupled from where they were at just six months ago. This means there's a lot more options to choose from. And again, it's going to go back and give you that negotiating power to be able to negotiate a better price on those potential homes that you're looking at, because you're going to say, Hey, look, Mr. Seller, you got four other homes in the neighborhood here that are for sale. They're all pretty similar to yours, but I really want yours because it's just a little bit more desirable, you know, but I do have some other options to choose from these other guys are willing to you know come off their price more you're gonna have a better um you know you're gonna have more of the leverage when it comes to negotiating a better offer because of that next up you've also got the positive that there's no multiple offers when it comes to a scenario like this you're gonna be in a spot where you don't have multiple offers on the home in most cases now every once in a while you might still run into another competing offer on a home that you love especially if it's a unique home you know maybe it's priced really well or it's got a unique feature like it backs up to a golf course or it's just got amazing city views and a really good price or something, you might still run into some multiple offers, but it's definitely not the norm right now. So being able to avoid that is going to make the process much easier overall. And the last thing I want to talk about here for the positives when it comes to purchasing a home right now in this market is it's extremely easy to negotiate incentives or closing cost credits from the sellers. Again, on those last five offers I did, four of them, we ended up asking for closing costs from the seller in a pretty substantial amount. Not only did we get money off of the purchase price, we also got closing cost incentives anywhere from $7,000 to $15,000 in credits for the buyer. So this is another thing you can negotiate right now, whereas 12 months ago, you wouldn't have been able to negotiate this. So that's a really cool benefit to purchasing right now is you get a lot more of that leverage. So that's another cool thing about this is you get a lot of that benefit of being able to purchase the home with less money out of pocket because the seller is actually providing those closing cost credits to you. Now, real quick, guys, we're going to get into the negatives of buying a home in this market. But as always, if you are thinking that now is the right time for you to buy or sell real estate, reach out to me. I've had people from all across the world reach out to me and say, Hey, Cody, I'm moving to your area. I need help purchasing a home. And I absolutely love it when you guys reach out. My information's here on the screen, and you can also find it in the description box below. Call, text, or email me anytime. I love hearing from you guys. Even if you live right here in our backyard and you want to buy or sell real estate, maybe even invest in real estate or purchase a new construction home, I would love to talk to you about your uh, the type of home and lifestyle you're looking for and how I can help you meet your real estate goals. So with that being said, let's go ahead and continue on with some of the negatives to purchasing a home right now. So jumping into the, some of the negatives to trying to purchase a home right now, obviously you're going to have higher interest rates, right? That's the elephant in the room here, which is going to lead to higher payments. We'll talk more about this here in just a second. Um, you also have the potential for prices to continue declining, right? I think that they'll probably go down at least another five to 10% over the next couple months, which, you know, a lot of people might be saying, oh, prices are going down, you know, five to 10%, that's a good amount, but it might not be as much as you actually think. We'll talk about that here in just a second as well. And again, remember that prices going down only matter if you actually plan to sell your home, right? So if you buy a home for a million dollars today and it goes down, you know, 10%, then it's only worth 900,000, let's say next year. Well, that really only matters if you're actually going to be selling your home. So it only matters on paper and it only matters if you plan to actually sell the home. So let's go back to number one here and talk about higher interest rates. So higher interest rates are going to be the elephant in the room. Of course, right now they're sitting anywhere between six and a half percent to seven and a half percent for most loan types. And now it does vary based on your credit qualifications, um, how much you, how much of a down payment you have, uh, what type of loan amount you're getting. You know, there's going to be a lot of variables there, but with the higher interest rates comes higher payments. So that's probably the biggest concern for most people 
is they just don't want to pay those higher amounts. I think this is completely reasonable. And so I think if you're looking at this saying, hey, you know, my budget was 800,000, but now because of the higher payments, maybe it's only 650 or 700,000, that might not take you out of those home prices that you were actually looking at, right? If you have an $800,000 home on the market, those people might be willing to take 750, maybe even 700,000, right? So it could bring it down enough to be able to get you into um, the home and still keep those payments at a range that you're comfortable with. We're also doing a lot of what we call 2-1 interest rate buy downs. That's a closing cost incentive that we've been able to negotiate recently. Um, I'm not going to cover that here in this video, but if it's something you're interested in, reach out to me. I can explain it to you um, in a personal, you know, direct message. So with that being said, the other things that I want to talk about here uh, with the higher payments is that, look, I'll be honest right now, it's probably cheaper to rent a home. Uh, you can rent an equivalent size home compared to what you'd purchase on that home. You're going to rent it for probably anywhere between uh, 15 to maybe 30% cheaper than what you'd be able to purchase it for with a typical, you know, 15 or 20% down payment. So it is cheaper to rent. However, that does come with some trade-offs still, right? When you're a homeowner, you do get the benefits of being able to pay down the mortgage each month, right? Each time you make a payment, you're paying off that loan a little bit. Whereas when you rent, you don't get any, any of that benefit, right? All that money goes out the window. You never see it again. Um, you also don't get the tax benefits, right? When it comes to having a mortgage, you get to write off the um, interest that you pay on that mortgage. So you can actually get some massive tax benefits from paying your monthly mortgage each month. So um, yes, it is cheaper to rent, but you're going to miss out on some of these other benefits. So it may not be as drastic as you might think on paper. And I should mention here real quick, if you're paying cash, this doesn't affect you at all, right? If you're paying cash for property, it doesn't even matter what interest rates you're going to do because you're not making a monthly payment. You're more concerned about taxes and insurance, which fluctuate much less on a yearly basis. So when it comes to paying cash for property, there could still be some good um, deals that are coming to the market over the next couple of months. You know, I think if we're thinking prices are going to go down another five to 10%, you might be able to negotiate that off the price right now. Or if you wait one, two, three, four months, I think you're going to be able to pick up some really good deals. Now, the other two negatives that we need to talk about here that we've already briefly mentioned is that you do have the potential for prices to continue declining another five to maybe 10%. Who knows? Maybe even 15 to 20%. Nobody really knows. I personally don't think it's going to be that drastic, but we will have to wait and see. I could be wrong with this. We could see prices continue to go down. It just is going to depend on what happens, you know, going over into the next couple months with inflation and what happens in the world economy, right? So uh, there's a potential for prices to to continue declining. But again, that price only matters if you plan to sell the home. If you're planning on selling the home in the next couple of years, then it might not be worth the gamble to go ahead and purchase a home right now. So with all that being said, I know we covered a lot here um, between the pros and cons. The thing that I really, you know, always come back to is like, look, Utah is growing like crazy. There's a lot of people who want to live here. It used to be kind of this secret state. You know, nobody really knew about it. It was relatively affordable. It has gotten pretty expensive in recent years, at least for housing. Um, but this is something that I always look at it and say, look, there's so much growth and demand here that I think in the long run, you're going to be okay if you purchase a home in today's market. If you look out 5, 10, 15 years, you're going to be okay. Now, yes, you could try and time the market, maybe buy in six months or 12 months, maybe get a slightly better deal. But when you, you know, zoom that out and you look at a 10 year time span, you might, you know, it might be negligible as to what you actually saved. So for right now, uh, these are the things you have to look at. If you're planning on owning the home for at least two years, I think you're going to be out coming out okay. If you're planning on selling the home, you know, in one or two years, I'd say it's probably not worth the risk. You're going to be much better off just renting a home and just continuing to um, rent and then see what the market does. And maybe it makes sense to jump in later. So again, if you're planning on owning the home for at least two to three years, I think you're going to come out okay. I think prices are going to rebound and we're going to see some growth going into the, you know, 2024, 2025, but we'll have to wait and see. If you're planning on owning the home for less than two years, then I would not do that. I would not make a purchase right now because you're probably going to come out uh, losing money if you try and do that strategy. So if you're going to own the home for less than two years, just save your time, save your effort, save your money and go ahead and rent a place. Now, one other thing that I want to talk about here is going to be, how does this compare to buying 12 months ago? Well, 12 months ago, you would have had multiple offers. You'd be offering five to 10% above the asking price. You'd be looking at waiving your contingencies and being almost at the complete mercy of the seller when it comes to closing dates, moving dates. Um, you know, prices were about $30,000 lower uh, 12 months ago than they are today. So yes, you would have been paying even a little bit less, but you would have 
in a scenario where you're um, you know waiving contingencies offering above the asking price and really just kind of giving up all the leverage as a buyer the advantage to that though was that you were able to lock in an interest rate anywhere from about 2.75 percent to three and a half percent depending on what type of loan you did so although you were paying more you were giving up some of that flexibility and leverage when it came to the actual offer you were in a position where you're able to lock in at a pretty good interest rate and how does this compare when it comes to trying to make a purchase in 12 months well that's tough to say you know nobody really knows where the market's going to be in 12 months i think that's something that's completely up in the air i think that prices will be down at least five to ten percent you know realistically speaking maybe more maybe a little bit less but we'll have to wait and see it's really going to depend on what happens the next couple months with the global economy with interest rates with inflation with just everything that's going on right now so although you're going to be locking in at a higher interest rate if you purchase a home today i think everybody out there is expecting that interest rates will come down in the next couple of years i think within two to three years we're going to see interest rates back down to the roughly five percent range and i think that um you know most of this will have kind of blown over all this you know scare about the market and interest rates and prices and all this stuff is going to blow over we're going to see interest rates come back down and you're going to be able to refinance and drop your payment significantly so if you're used to paying you know i don't know let's say four thousand dollars a month for your payment um once you refinance you might only be paying 3200 right and so that's going to be a huge savings for you on your monthly house bill so with all that being said guys thanks so much for watching as always reach out to me call text or email if you're thinking about making a move here or you already live here and you want to buy sell invest in real estate maybe purchase a new home i would love to chat with you about the type of home and lifestyle you're looking for or if you're looking to sell a home how we can make that possible for you i want to be your trusted real estate resource when it comes to real estate here in utah and i cannot wait to hear from you so reach out to me uh, please do i've heard from hundreds of you guys over the years and i would love to talk to you individually um, also with that said check out the links in the description box below and we'll catch you guys in the next video